Hi, I'm Gavin. Okay, Gavin, you, you grew up here in Oklahoma. Can you tell me a little bit about what your story kind of? Yeah, I grew up here in Oklahoma. I was born in Norman. Uh, I've been living here. I lived. Uh, I grew up in Choctaw, actually. Uh, I went to elementary, uh, junior high, and high school in Choctaw. And then uh, my family moved to Nova City, and I've been living there since. Uh, been married, divorced, all that stuff. So. Okay. Now I'm just alone. Are, are you? Are you? So you divorced at, at this moment? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, my son, he's 12. His name's Oliver. Oliver. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And. Uh, Yep. Okay. Gabby, yeah, you got any thoughts about God or the afterlife? What do you think? You don't have to have my same belief system, but you got any thoughts about God? Or... I just know that Jesus saved us all. So that's the biggest thing. Oh man. Yep. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You, you pretty much you pretty much got it. Uh, yep. So um, now I always tell people this, and I'm not trying to make you question anything, but eternity is such a long time to be wrong, and um, and so one of the biggest ways you can be deceived. Is you think you're in your way to heaven, yep. and you find out when you get there, you've been you've been tricked. That's that probably be the biggest deception in the world, right? <laughs> and yep. I'll let you read this if you don't mind, okay? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, is it Matthew chapter seven? Okay. Um, and it starts in verse twenty-one. And tell me what you think. Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord. We prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and performed many miracles in your name. But I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me. Who breaks God's laws? Yeah. Tell, but, tell me what you think about that one. That's pretty interesting. <laughs> Why you say that? Well, if, if you believe something, but you're fake about it. Yep. In your heart and stuff. Yep. In your soul and your spirit. Sure. Yep. Yeah, man. You gotta believe it with your whole heart. That's what faith is. Absolutely, absolutely. And and that's uh, the only way you'll get grace. Man, you got it, man. So uh, I like to give people the good person test. Like I said, you already know this. I'm yep. not you know, telling you something you already know. But I give you the good person test. And this is a way that God is gonna determine whether you where you spend eternity. Yep. All right. So it's like a let's just say. Can I put y'all on there too? Sure. Yeah. All right. So I'm talking to these ladies. They always are they believers. But I'll, I'll give you a um, let's just say right now. You were going to the doctor, Gavin, yep. and um, the doctor said you had a terminally ill disease and you're going to die. Yep. Uh, would you want the x-ray first or would you want the cure? Which one would you choose first? Cure. Cure, right? Yep. All right. But, you know, you don't know necessarily what the doctor's giving you, right? Yep. So you definitely want to know what the assessment is before you take the cure. Yeah, I mean, and what I, you think? I think that's the crazy thing about medicine is, like, everything... In the, it seems like they, they just made up words for all the stuff that's in medicine. <laughs> yeah. I mean, seriously, I, I look true. at this word and I'm like, what is this word? Exactly. It's just a bunch of hocus. Exactly. But there's no desperation. Like, if you don't, if you don't have any desperation, you probably won't be interested in the cure. So the good person test gives people the, the desperation part. Yep. So Gavin, I'm not judging you, but this is a good person test. This is for you to evaluate your own soul. Okay. Because not everyone who says me, Lord, Lord, which I, you seem like you already got it. So. Gavin, how many lies have you told in your life? How many lies? Lies have you told in your life? <laughs> I don't know that I've told one. What? Really? You never told a lie? I don't think so. Wow. Man, that's... Are you serious? Possibly. Man, you, man, you're making me feel bad now. Uh, Gavin, have you ever stolen anything? Nope. Never stolen anything? You ever cheated on a test and stole answers? Nope. Now, Gavin, hold it. All right, all right, all right. Here's, all right, here's, here's some more. Um... Uh, let me have you. What about this one? Um, all right, this is probably gonna nail all of us to the wall. And no offense, ladies. Uh, Jesus said, "You know what adultery is? Of course you are. All right. Do you have any idea how we break this standard of adultery? Do you have any idea how we break it? Yep. So Jesus said <laughs> in Matthew chapter seven, verse twenty-one, "You have heard it. It was said that you should not commit adultery. But He raises the standard. He says, "I say to you, if anyone looks at a woman with lustful intent." You commit adultery in your heart already. Gavin, have you ever looked at someone with lust? Sex out of marriage, pornography, anything so, to do with sex outside so the, of God's design. The thing that I think about that is, too, that what if they look at you with lust? Yes, yeah, adultery on name. I mean, yeah. what if they look at men, women, children, sure. anything with lust? Absolutely. What if they put that in you before you're even born? What if they put that we, in you? We, we yep. are born with sin already. That's right, right? that's right. We, we're automatically born with sin. Are we right. perfect? Nobody's perfect. Exactly. Yep. All right. 
So you want to X that one out or guilty or not guilty on that? Not guilty? No, I just want to X it out. X it out. Okay, all right. Because, I mean, if you're born to sin and you live your life sure. the best you can. Yep. Okay. All right, I'm going to give you two more. What letters in the middle of the word sin, Gavin? I. So, so anytime I do what I want to do instead of what God has prescribed. That's them I wills, right? I will. Yep. Well, we violate the first commandment. Yep. So... Uh, that's what Adam did. Adam and Eve did. They did what they want to do. That's the eye in the middle of sin. Yep. So, Gavin, uh, have you ever violated this standard of doing what you want to do instead of what God wants? Man. At any point in your life? This is the first day huh? I've actually got to do what I want to do. Okay. I've been working, going to school, all that stuff sure. my entire life. Yeah. For what? Okay. So you do? Okay. That is really the only thing. That, that car over there, that is the only, that was a gift from my dad. No, car? That's really the only thing I want. truck? No, it's a Lexus. Oh, you got a Lexus? Yeah, I gave it to me. My oh, goodness. I got that car since I was 16, dude. Which one? Oh. Okay, I mean, no, no, let me finish the interview and I, let's finish the interview and now you show me, okay? Is that, that okay? That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Well, man, all right, let me give you one more. Gavin, have you ever been angry to the point you felt like you could put some pain on somebody? Oh, yeah. All right? You have, <laughs> <laughs> do you have any idea what the Bible equates that commandment that we break with? Yeah, any idea what, what what commandment we violate when we're angry with somebody we almost felt like we can put some pain on? What is that? It's, the Bible says it's murder. Did mm -hmm. you know that? Yeah. <laughs> it says in 1 John chapter 3, verse 15, if you're, you're angry with your brother or sister, you're a murderer. Because yeah. murder starts where? It starts in our hearts, yeah. right? So, Gavin, I'm not judging you, but the one you admitted that you are guilty of is murder. Yep. Yeah. Um, so, here's, here's the... What do you think the verdict... What do you think the punishment for us sinning against a righteous, holy God is? You have any idea? Wrath. Wrath, right? So if you were to put your eternity on a percentage scale, was zero percent, you go to hell. Hundred percent, you get into heaven. Where do you feel like you fall? If you had to put it on a percentage scale? Uh, probably 50-50. 50 50? That does that bother you that if you die today, there's a 50% chance you can spend eternity in hell? Does that bother you in any kind of way? No. Nope. Really doesn't? I'm just gonna live my life. Okay. Well, let's just say me and you jumping out of a plane, you had a parachute, and I told you 50% chance this parachute will work. I guess I'm dying today. <laughs> you gonna jump? You wouldn't jump course, though, would yeah, you? yeah, dude. Why would you jump? Why not? That's gonna be the happiest fall I've ever had. No, I guarantee yeah, that's man. gonna be the freest you are. You think Superman wants to fly? He wants to fly every day. He don't want to hit the ground going 180 miles per hour. You think I'm gonna hour? feel anything? That's probably the best death you can have. Okay, Gabby, you, you concerned to me right now. What? <laughs> do, are, do you, I'm just trying to be honest. Yeah. Do you do do you ever think about death or suicide or no. never thought about that? No. But you you want your parachute to be 100 percent, right? I would, yeah. Yeah, you I don't want to live. Yeah, of course. That, that, right? But I'm saying, if I had a chance, 50 50, I'd still take the jump. You still take the jump, yeah. Gavin? Everybody does every day. You think that parachute has a guaranteed chance, well, 100 percent? That's true. I guarantee it doesn't. That's true. But here's the big picture: is you don't want to swing out into eternity 50 percent. No. Right? Because you could go to hell. Yep. 50 percent, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, so do you know how a man can close the gap? Because whatever fifty percent do you feel like you have to do in order to close the gap to get it a hundred percent in heaven? You have any idea what you you think you need to do? You give your life to Christ. Good question, man. He, that's a great he, response. He ab absolves all your sins right there. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, so I'll, I'll close with this illustration. I mean, you 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 hit it on the head. <laughs> so why do you feel like you steal fifty percent if you feel like you've given it over to Christ? Oh, I, I said this was a, after this day. It's always 100%. After this day? Mm -hmm. Why you say that? Oh, because I'm on vacation. I got my own business. I'm ready to go. You ready to go? Yeah, yeah. Just go do what I want to do. Yeah. I've been I, like I've been working for people my entire life. Sure. I actually get to work for myself now and do exactly what I want to do. Okay. Well, the reason why I'm telling you this, Gavin, is because a lot of people are going to be deceived on the day of judgment. Mm -hmm. It says narrow is the way that leads to life. Yep. And only a few find it. Now, read that, right? So you don't you don't want you want to make sure you're on a narrow path. Because a lot of people say they have encountered Jesus. I'll give you an example. If I told you tomorrow I'll meet you guys here at 5 o'clock and I show up late and you say, hey, hey, Coach T, why was you late? And I said, hey, I had an accident on the freeway. I had a head-on collision uh, with an 18-wheeler going uh, 80 miles per hour. And you just flew here? Well, I look like I look. <laughs> like you, I look like this. Yeah. You're going to conclude what? If I had an encounter with an 18-wheeler head-on collision and a crash and I still look like this, what you going to conclude? She already shaking her head. <laughs> What was you gonna conclude? 
Something's wrong with you. Something's wrong with me. Either I'm lying or I'm crazy, <laughs> right? Because there's no way I can have an encounter with an 18 wheeler and then a head on collision and still look the same. Yep. Well, a lot of people said they've had a head on encounter with Jesus, right? So which one would change a person more? Having a head on collision with, with, with God or the universe, like in salvation, or having an encounter with an 18 wheeler going 80 miles per hour? Which one would change a person more? Jesus. Yeah, so if a person says they had an encounter with Jesus, but their life still looks the same, they can conclude probably that they really didn't have an encounter. Yep. So you have any idea what God did for guilty sinners so they won't have to go to hell? Life. Yeah, two thousand years ago, we he gave his son. Yep. We broke the law. Jesus came and paid the fine. So it's like a man that walks into a courtroom, pays your fine. Yeah. Now the judge can do what? Judge. He can he can let you go <laughs> because of the mercy of the man that paid your fine. When when Jesus went to the cross, that's what he did for us. Yep. He's paid the fine. And so if we really had an encounter with Jesus, he'll change everything about us. It's not by perfection, but direction. So, man, do you feel like you've had that encounter, or do you feel like because that fifty percent concerns me? You want to be 100 percent but what do you feel what do you, what, what do you think oh, i'm 100 i go to church almost every sunday hey ladies y'all want to say <laughs> yeah. uh y'all want to say anything I think what you're doing is awesome. Really? I wish you guys the best. And if you want to come play pickleball more, <laughs> we're here all the time. So, yeah. <laughs> hey, I'll definitely be back. I mean, back. <laughs> hey, I appreciate y'all. I think appreciate y'all. Now, I want to go check out that car, man. You, 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 I, it was